we're a couple minutes in. So welcome to my master class in this series for 100% Pure. I'm so excited to be a part of this because nails, obviously, I've done nails for a gazillion years. I'm Kimmy Keys. I live out in Los Angeles and I do nails for celebrities, which is super exciting and always fun and different and I'm really blessed. It's a great job. I cannot complain. I'm, I can't believe this is what I do for a living. Um, I went from doing nails in my mom's basement when I was 14 to now doing nails on set and for some of the most noteworthy people um, in the world. It's crazy. Uh, but today, today I'm going to teach you guys how to do an at-home manicure using a bunch of products from 100% Pure. And I know a lot of you are familiar with the brand. Um, for those of you who are not, it's vegan, it's cruelty free, it's amazing. And the polishes, I was talking to the brand about them, they just go on so nice, they wear so nice, they're, they're glossy, there's lots of beautiful choices. Oh, thank you for saying I'm pretty. <laughs> that was so kind. Um, all right, let's see. So when you, st oh, obviously we're all at home for this quarantining stuff and social distancing. And 100% Pure has come up with this masterclass series so that you guys can learn something new, um, try something different, learn new products, make yourself feel good. We all need that right now. Huh? Um, so I'm going to start with, products. I'm going to quickly show you kind of, it's hard to show hands and face at the same time. So I'm going to show it just for a minute. So here's some of their nail polish colors that I'm going to use today. And I'm going to be using their lotions, their hand sanitizer spray. We all need some of this, right? I have it in my car. I carry it in my purse. Um, we're going to use a scrub. This is oh, it's so amazing. All right. So to start with, we're going to sanitize our hands. Either you wash your hands or you sanitize them. I love sanitizer sprays. And what's really great about this one is it has tea tree um, oil and aloe in it. So it's sanitizing and cleaning and giving you all those benefits of getting rid of germs and all the stuff we're so afraid of right now. But at the same time, it doesn't dry your hands out because it's moisturizing. And it smells like, you know, tea tree smell. Smells like a spa, it smells clean. I just love, and you, I spray front and back. I always wash, or sorry, I always wipe it to dry it and make sure I've covered all the nooks and crannies. It smells so good. <laughs> um, after that, I always love doing a scrub because we are washing so much. We are doing all of these things. So scrubs will help exfoliate and sloth off all that, you know, skin that is damaged from all this washing. So I just take like a generous little lump and I'm just gonna wash, I need my towel, I'm about to make a huge mess, <laughs> sorry. So I'm gonna wash my hands, like I'm washing my hands and it's rough because it's sea salts, but that's what's doing all the magic. And then all the oils in it are, um, oh, it smells so good. The scent in this is lavender and it just, Smells like I'm in a field of amazingness. So I'm just gonna scrub and clean and like really exfoliate. You're gonna wanna wash your hands after you do this. Um, I brought in my little handy dandy bowl because I don't have a sink in, this is my nail room we're in. I have a bedroom in my house that's 100% dedicated to nails and polish and products. And <laughs> it's fun in here, it's a girl's dream. All right, so after you finish that, you're just gonna rinse them. I'm gonna use this bowl of water here to my side. And the oils in this make your skin like butter. It's, it's so nice. And this is a body scrub, so it doesn't have to only be used on your hands. You can use this on, you know, in your shower, on your feet, everywhere. All right. Oh, man, it feels good. It's like, I don't know if you can tell how soft these hands get from from that type of a treatment all right let's see I'm trying to remember all right okay so after the moisture from the scrub do you put alcohol in the nail 100 um we haven't gotten to that part yet but 
what I find very important in manicuring is so many people are, are concerned about polish and making sure that they have pretty nails, but they forget to do a proper prep. So what I want to share with you that I find to be one of the most important things is that you have to care about your skin and your cuticles. You have to make sure they're clean and dry, um, moisturized. You want to make sure, I'll show you later, but we're going to prep the nail to make sure that it's ready to paint because you don't want all of these emollient um, oils to get into your polish either because not only will it not last on your hand, but it's also not good for the product. So you want to make sure that we're being very clean and very sanitized and making sure that we take all the steps to ensure that our manicure lasts for as long as it can and that we don't obviously contaminate or damage our other products with oils and things that don't belong in polish, right? <laughs> there's like, I forgot to tell you, there's like um, really yummy um, oils in this. I want to say it's sun... Flower. Let me double check. I, I try and remember all this stuff, but it's hard to. Okay, that's right. It's sunflower and apricot oils, which are incredibly oil moyant and, and smell so good. So this I highly recommend. This is a newer product and so is the um, hand sanitizer. So and there's also some new exciting stuff on the uh, forefront that 100% Pure is going to add to their collection in the nail category, which is coming later. Um, all right, so since I used Lavender Scrub, um, out of the two lotions, there's one that's a uh, eucalyptus and one that's a lavender. And I wanna stay in the theme of lavender, so I am going to use this one. I forgot to pull my little tab. Oh, yeah, Facebook Live was hard for me too. It's BB131920. I am new to learning a lot about this Instagram Live stuff too, but I'm glad you figured it out and you're joining us. All right, so you just want to put a little in your hands, really work it in. And the thing about products like these and good products, like they really just smell good. Not only are they so beneficial because the, the um, ingredients are so clean and so good for your skin and your mind and your well-being. Um, but the smells is my favorite part. Anything that smells good just makes me so happy. All right. So oh, I can do this all day. <laughs> so this, now we've got our hands prepped. They're They're clean. They're sanitized. They're scrubbed so they feel soft and silky. And then we've added this beautiful lotion at the end to give them a really amazing feel. It's a buttercream, these lotions. And they're um, formulated to, you know, really moisturize and soften your hands. Um, what was I going to tell you? Oh, these are cool because they have cocoa and avocado and shea butters in them. Um, and they're uh, instilled with vitamins and super fruits. I don't know if you know this, but they put a lot of fruit stuff in their products, which I just learned and find fascinating and love. All right. So I'm just going to kind of brush, wipe off, I should say, the top of my nails to clean off a little bit of that lotion and make sure there's not a lot on there because we're going to move into doing... Um, polishing. All right. So the first step in any manicure is going to be, well, first we're going to prep our nails. I'm sorry. I jumped ahead of myself. There's two kinds of files, right? There's a smoother file. It's a higher grit. So when you get up to like the 180s, the 200s, it's going to feel really smooth and satiny. And then there's other files that are like 100, 120. These are grittier. So I have an enhancement nail. And if you have an enhancement nail, a grittier, harder file is really okay to use because you have a thicker, more um, dense nail. So when you're filing, a good trick to know is depending on what kind of shape you're trying to achieve, you're going to want to file on the sides first, right? One side, the other side, if it's a pointy. So I'm going to do it this way. It's hard to show you on this film. So I'm going to file this way and this way to achieve my desired narrowness. And then around the tops, kind of just round it off. I'm 
Okay, now if I were gonna do a square nail, I think an important thing to teach you is to keep your nail flat with your nail, or your file flat with your nail, and you're gonna to wanna to start in the center. If you go from left to right, you're gonna create a curve in that straight nail. So stay in the center and go flat until you get the desired shape. So the, until the edge of the nail gets down to the, to the edge middle, gets down to the sides and creates that flat nail. Then, now that we have, um, let's see, Quinton Compare. I'm sorry, I'm terrible with reading names, but um, glass nail files and metal nail files, some people prefer those on a natural nail because they are softer. They usually have a um, lighter grit, like I was mentioning before, like a higher, sorry, like a 200, 180, when it starts to get really um, less coarse. It's kind of like sandpaper, you know, like Home Depot. Same idea. <laughs> uh, all right, so we have filed our nails, talked about grit. Then I'm gonna use, I think first we gotta prep the nail. So we're gonna take a cotton square and a, you can use rubbing alcohol or nail polish remover, anything to really dehydrate that nail and make sure that you're getting down in the corners because you want to really clean that nail plate and make sure that there's no more oils or lotions before you paint polish. My, my nail school instructor would roll over if she heard me say paint. She said, you paint a house, you polish a nail. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to prep this hand. And I don't know if you know much about their nail polishes, but like I said, they're cruelty free, vegan, clean of all the toxins that are in a lot of the other um, brands out there. I'm gonna do my other hand too. Because <laughs> I'm gonna show you a little trick to painting your non-dominant hand because we all struggle with that, right? We're, we're good, it's like, our right hand paints our, if we're right-handed, obviously, whatever your predominant hand is, paints the non-predominant hand to look so pretty. And then the poor, the dominant hand that did such a nice job on the other hand often looks not so great because, you know, our left hand can't do a good job. Um, how did I get into doing slabs? I moved to Los Angeles like 15 years ago and I went to work for a couple, um, salons in the area and then I found out about mobile spas so I started doing at-home services through those and I met some people that way um you pluck a chicken you tweeze your eyebrows I love those things sorry I got distracted um so I moved out here and I started doing nails for those type of businesses and I started doing house calls which was all new to me I, I worked at home when I was a kid I had my own little salon in the basement but when I came here and they started sending me out to other people's homes, I had to learn how to pack my stuff and what worked well in traveling and come up with a table and a light and all these things that I learned over the years. Um, and now I uh, do nails for a lot of really great people. I have an agent um, who sends me out and I've been really fortunate and blessed to you know, have really great opportunities in this industry. All right, so. I think today, because it's summertime and it's bright, I'm gonna pull this down a little so that you can see my hands better. I know it's hard to do a tutorial about nails because you kind of have to change your view a bit. All right, here we go. So I am going to use these bright colors because it's summertime and it's fun and I wanna do something fun. So I'm gonna use watermelon and maybe I'll do this one with it. I'm going to do a little bit of fun stuff later too. All right. So I always shake my polish first. It's important to make sure that your nail polishes are um, mixed well before you start to polish. And then you're going to want to, you can kind of see where the wide part of the nail, where it's pinched. I don't know if it's, you want to, you want to use the flattest side of the brush. So you wanna bring it up and wipe it on the bottle or the neck of the bottle and then a little on the other side. You wanna keep some on the brush but not too much because you don't wanna flood your cuticles. So the trick to painting your nails well is to set 
the brush down near the cuticle, a little bit away, and kind of give it a little push back, but you want the brush to fan all the way out. I hope you guys can see that good. And then you're gonna pull to the end, right? And you're gonna do the same thing on the edges. Now, when you're going to the edge, another trick, if you can see, I'm rolling the cap of the brush towards my cuticle, like away from the middle. And what that's gonna do is distribute the polish into that edge without getting into the cuticle. Oh, these colors are so fabulous. I love it so much. All right, now another great trick. I mean, typically I do use a base coat. Um, I have an artificial nail, so I don't have one today, but a base coat is important for um, a natural nail for sure, because it does a few things. It keeps the natural oils from coming up through the nail plate and causing chipping. It also is important for um, it to hold on to the nail. It's a gripping thing. So you want to make sure that you are prepping the nail in a proper way, depending on what kind of nail you have. Um, the nail colors are $14, but there are, is a sale happening on some of those colors right now online, which is exciting. So I'm going to do all my nails in this color except my, my um, accent nail. Again, you just want to set that brush down, give it a little wiggle towards the cuticle, and pull away. And then when you go on the sides, try that twisting the cap technique and see if that helps you get a good close to the edge without hitting the skin. Now, if you do hit the skin, all you need is one of these little handy guys. This is a called a French manicure brush or a cleanup brush. It has a lot of different names. There's a lot of these online you can pick up, but this is a amazing tool. You just dip this into, oh, sorry, this color is watermelon. Um, you dip this into the polish remover and just kind of set it not too wet because you don't want to flood it and just kind of brush away any any problematic spots you get if you hit, touch the skin a little. This watermelon color is so incredible. Again, try like that wiggle to the cuticle and roll it a bit. So I, like everyone else, am not great at painting my not dominant hand, but there are some tricks. And so it's like, for me, because my right hand is so good and my left hand is not that great, um, I find that I tend to still hold this hand still and do the work here. So when I'm filing this hand, I file using my right hand, right? When I'm filing using, holding the file in this hand, I still tend to move this hand to file because it's more, it's easier for me to control. Um, what happened to, oh, I don't know about the lip gloss, but definitely 100% um, pure. We'll get back to you about that. Thank you. Um, I, I have enhancements on my nails because I've just not been great at growing nails, um, but I do enjoy having a long nail. Now I'm going to use Kiss, and I'm going to put that on my ring finger. And do the roll. All right. All right, so now I have a wet left hand. So we're going to use my left... Um, <laughs> them for you do the same thing when you file it's so funny isn't it it's like my my hand just does not do well the other way um let's see i'm going to show you well first i'm going to paint my other hand because i think it's important that you see what i do and what my tricks are so again like i said before this hand doesn't move as well as my or my left hand doesn't move as well as my right hand so again, I'm still going to set the brush down and press it into the cuticle. But now sometimes it's easier if I just pull my nail away instead of trying to keep 
keep this left hand in check, it might be easier for you to use the motion with your prominent hand. Not bad, not bad. And I'll tell you, these bright, cheery colors just pick my spirits up so much. When I have nice nails and I'm, whatever I'm doing in life, if I'm texting or cleaning or cooking and I have pretty nails, it makes my whole day better. Roll that cap into that corner. Again on the other side. Now two, a very, very important part um, of painting your nails, which I have not been doing. I'm, I apologize. And again, it's because I have artificial nails and I forget that I need to tell people who do not have that, that it's very important. And it is important on an artificial nail too, but way more important on a natural nail is to run that brush along the edge of your nail and cap it. Because I'm sure we all know that the most chipping starts at the very, very edge of our nails. So creating this little lip that hugs over the edge of your nail is going to be an amazing improvement on how well it wears and how long it lasts. I got a little salt on myself still. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna reverse it on this hand. I'm gonna do the watermelon as my accent nail. Sorry if I'm making, trying to keep this in view of you guys. And pull. And you know what's really awesome about these colors? And I don't know if you anyone's out there a big nail polish fan. You've used a bunch of different brands in your lives. And the first coat on a lot of brands can be kind of sad looking. Um, but you can tell these colors are so vibrant and so good that you really can get away with only one coat if you want. Like I don't feel like that's streaky or um not covering well so you can definitely do just one coat with a lot of their colors they're really pretty all right i'm gonna do the pull away <laughs> and the cap twist both of those things to me make painting your nails so much easier when you're doing it on yourself soothing watching me paint. I love that. <laughs> it is, to me, I've done nails for so long. It is kind of therapeutic. It's one of those things that brings me joy. And ultimately when it's done, it makes me so happy that I do kind of get into a trance when I'm doing it where I'm just like, it's very peaceful and very, makes me happy. I'm, cap I'm not capping. I'm showing you guys wrong. I'm so sorry. Definitely cap. It's so important. All right, so now we're gonna use the top coat, which is so shiny and so nice and dries really well. Um, unfortunately, it is not available at the moment because uh, it is sold out because it is that great. <laughs> so um, be sure to get, there's a list, you can get on the list um, to purchase this when it becomes available. Oh, I'm greasy. Uh oh. Should have opened that first note to self. There we go. <laughs> I just used a little um, polish remover on a cotton. If my cap is spinning in my hands, that way I can get a good grip. I'm a little trick. So with top coat, same idea. You want to wipe it on the sides and try and use the flattest part of the brush where it's pinched at the plastic where it connects to the wand you'll see a little pinch and it flares out and gets flatter if you keep it in line with that pinch. And then you get a wider brush, you get better coverage, and you just wanna set and pull. Same as you polish. You can be a little generous with your top coat, you just do not want to um, flood your cuticles. It's messy. And while the brush is amazing and helps so much, it also, if you don't need it, it's a really good day. 
accent nail always have a different color. Yeah, the accent nail is fun. It's like, why pick one color when you can pick two? Um, how do you cap the edge? Without, how do you cap the um, edge without getting it too thick? Um, just make sure your brush is clean. Like it's, it's wiped off real well. You don't want a lot of product there. And I find too, that's that whole flat thing when you um, set and pull and you're going to the end to, um, to uh, cap the edge, just make sure it's not very wet. Keep the nail kind of in line with the, that flat part of the nail uh, brush in line with the cap capping area, like along the nail and just kind of gently put it around. You do not want to flood it. Cause yeah, I know what you're talking about. Sometimes if you do do that, it becomes very thick and gunky and like crazy looking on the end. And that's not pretty. You don't want that. Um, next we are going to, I'm going to do a little nail art, just a little something fun and quick. I'm trying to get in the frame so you can see me. I feel weird with my half head cut off, although I'm a manicurist. So whenever we make videos, it's never really much about our faces. I'm going to take this and I'm going to take my nail file. It's just a toothpick, right? Everybody has toothpicks at their house. And I'm going to take this file and I'm going to file this toothpick flat. So I'm taking away, I would not recommend doing this while your nails are wet because there is dust happening. Although this polish dries so quickly, it's not really sticking, but it could. So kind of prep your, your um, toothpick before if you're going to do this. All right, so it's kind of, you can see how it's kind of flattened now. And I'm going to make it a daughter tool. I don't know if you guys have ever used one before, but basically what it does is it creates perfect little circle dots on your nails. I'm trying to find a little something to put my polish on. You know what? I'm going to use the lid of my scrub. <laughs> Let's use a brighter pink so you can really see it great on top of the other nail. This one's called Crush. And I'm going to just set like a little dot here. This has become my nail polish art palette <laughs> and I'm going to dip this in the end and look you can make perfect little circles with a toothpick at home so let's go see if these colors contrast oh yeah it looks so good it's so cute and so easy and everyone has a toothpick you can't see my hand. Did I mess up? Sorry. Um, is it better to go this way maybe? Do you want it closer? And then you can kind of play with the dots. They don't all have to match. If you re-dip into the paint polish, sorry, you'll get the same size dots. If you want it to kind of graduate and become smaller, do just dip once and keep going and you'll see that you get less and less polish on you as you, you get to the end. And so your dots will become smaller. So that's just a really quick, easy tip to doing a little bit of nail art um, at home. Something simple. Another thing I like to do when I do nail art is you can just use the brush. There's Frenches. There's all kinds of like... You can just do a half swipe, right? Super easy. You don't need any special tools. You're just going to use the brush and the polish and create that little arch on your nail. You can do like a full French by just, again, be careful not to have too much polish and swipe it. around and you can make a couple passes till you get like a decent French shape again I just love so much how they're how emollient and coverage their colors are like that's one coat all of this is one coat and it's sim super simple to to use and the drying speed is great because we all know that is super, super important when we're polishing our nails at home. We want to always make sure that it is, um, oops, 
Yeah, see, lids, fine. I do that with a lot of lids when I'm doing nail art because I need somewhere to make my little piles of color. So I just drop it onto whatever surface I know that I can wipe away with polish remover and not damage it. It didn't melt it or anything. How long does the color stay on the nails? I mean, these colors wear so well. You can get a couple weeks of wear out of them if you prep properly, if you don't flood or make it too thick, and using a top coat and also a base coat. Um, let's see, does anyone have any questions? Make flower accents with a toothpick. I'm sure you could. I've never tried it, but it's if you're are you talking about the dotting type of flowers or you want to make them like more arched? You can really use so many at-home products to create nail art. I did a whole tutorial years ago using Q-tips and you can like pull out the cotton and spin it and make a striper brush. Um, you can paint your nail and then paint like paint a lighter color and then paint a darker color over it. And while the darker color is wet, you just take a Q-tip and roll it over the nail and it pulls up some of the wet on the top and exposes some of the light on the bottom and it makes this really cool effect and it takes two seconds. Nail, um, celebrity nail trends. Um, I did some negative space nail art the other day on a girl. Um, thoughts on buffing. Buffing is great, you just don't wanna over buff. And there's two types of buffing. There's buffing to make your nails, um, to prep your nails and make your nails smooth. And there's also um, buffing that's for a shine. I love both. I think that you should for sure um, not over buff. That's the only thing. Don't do it too often. How often should you push back cuticles? Um, you know, a good trick to pushing back cuticles is when you get out of your shower. So your nails are super soft. They're if you washed and conditioned your hair and all of those things, your skin is soft on your hands as well. And so you can easily push back. You can use your own other nail, your thumbnail on your other hand. You can use, I have all kinds of cuticle tools. You can use like a metal flat end. I also have these little guys, which I love. They just have like kind of a sharp edge and they scrape real good to get that trigium, which is the skin that grows up onto your nail, um, to get that pushed back. Uh, I don't use cuticle stones, so I'm not very good at being um, giving much advice on that. Uh, the negative nail, sorry, negative nail art, negative space. Um, I don't know if I said space. That's my fault. <laughs> negative space is where you paint like part of your nail. I'll show you real quick. I love that we're like nail arting all of a sudden. This is good stuff. It also comes off really good and easy. All right, so if we're gonna do some negative, I'll do something similar to what I did this week. So is it too bright? That seems okay. All right, sorry. So I took, I did like a French like this. Right, and then cuticle nipper versus cuticle stone. Oh, I think I already talked about that. Um, I do like a nipper though. I do use nippers. If there's, you wanna be careful not to trim off um, healthy skin. You want to make sure that you're only getting the stuff that's dry or bunching up when you push it back or hang nails, things like that. Cuticle nippers can be more damaging than they can be good if they are not used properly or if you get too aggressive in cutting. And so then I just took kind of a straight line across. And so the negative space part is whenever you're doing nail art and you're leaving like unpolished spaces, right? So if you can see in there, like that corner isn't painted, the back isn't painted, you can do more stripes, more ideas, more pulling around with, um, playing around, sorry, with different colors, leaving just some areas unpainted. So they're kind of fun. All right, but make sure you do get on the list for this cuticle, or for the, uh, top coat because it is 
it is really good. I mean, look, we just painted that not long ago and we're not getting any kind of movement. It's really drying quickly and the shine, even the shine on the colors without a top coat is pretty, but I always recommend a top coat because top coat is instrumental in keeping the shine and keeping the color on for longer. All right. So just a recap on all the products we use today. Sanitizer. You're going to love this. This isn't only good for doing your nails at home. This is great for your car and making sure that your hands are clean when you come in from stores and things like that. I put it in my cup holder in my car. The scrub again, which has yummy oils and amazing hydration and make very emollient. It's great. You'll love that. And then the body, or sorry, the um, hand buttercream. This is really great too. You're going to love that on, my skin feels great. Like that's my favorite part of, of doing a proper prep on my manicure is the fact that my hands feel good after, especially since in these times I've been really dry and, and um, aggressively cleaning my house, myself and spraying things. So it's important. Any suggestions for people who use hand centers frequently? It's always, it eats through your polish. Um, I have not heard that before. Uh, maybe it's your top coat or if you're not using a top coat, that could be um, a reason why maybe that's happening. Um, you can't have any longer nails for uh, nice suggestions for short nails. Um, negative space is great on a short nail. If you feel like painting the whole nail makes it look short and stubby, uh, doing some kind of art to create um, something fun by making your nails look narrower and not so wide. That might be a good suggestion or just doing a French tip and you can do a French tip in colors. All different colors look great. Um, I want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Let's see. Yeah. Toxin free, 10 toxin free. I don't know if I said that, which is very important. Also, um, there will be a, giveaway um, after this where 100% Pure will pick some sort of information that I've given you in this tutorial and see who can answer that, which will be great. Um, the nails I have on are um, a gel nail. And I, I prefer them because I think they're, for me, they're more flexible and comfortable on my hands. But also use a cuticle oil. I, I finish with a cuticle, a cuticle oil all the time. You just want to put it on around your skin because we've used all kinds of products, right? We've had polish removers or rubbing alcohol or whatever we used to make sure that the nail plate was prepped and good. So you want to make sure that we are caring for our skin, which again is a lot of the prep, but it's also a great thing for a finisher to make sure that we hydrate and make that skin and stuff happy around our nails. Oh, these are fun. I'm going to keep these for a while. I like them. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me during this masterclass. It was super fun. Um, thanks for all the questions and I hope you enjoyed it. Again, thanks 100% Pure for having me. I love the product.